Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you William Bendix, Heston Foster, and Lloyd Nolan in Rottle Canal Diary with Richard Jacob. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Fifty years from today, an old man slowly walks down Main Street. All his life, he's been justly proud that he was one of the famous few. And as he walks, his neighbors point him out to the stranger in town. That man was at Guadalcanal, they say. And perhaps they add, I wonder what it was really like. Right now, that old man of the future is a youngster with a confidence set to his shoulders and a hint of a swagger in his walk. And rightly so, because he is a United States Marine. A Marine who helped to turn the great retreat in the Pacific into a great attack. A Marine who made American history. But behind the confident shoulders and the slight swagger lingers the memory of other Marines who rest forever in the green jungles of Guadalcanal. The war correspondent... Richard Tregaskis wrote the story in Guadalcanal just as he saw it happen. From that book, 20th Century Fox made one of the really great motion pictures of the war. And tonight we bring it to you with the same stars you saw on the screen. Preston Foster, William Bendix, and Lloyd Nolan. They happen to be three of Hollywood's busiest citizens. Lloyd Nolan is just back from a Bond tour. Bill Bendix is currently adding radio laurels to his screen honors with a weekly show called The Life of Riley. And Preston Foster runs a 600-acre ranch in addition to a full picture schedule. Most of, us, most of us have seen pictures of Guadalcanal in the newspapers and magazines. Pictures of the wreckage of war in the midst of choking jungle, with perhaps here and there a lonely coconut palm still standing above the debris. Strangely enough, that lonely palm tree has a very direct connection with Lux Flight. You see, before the war, there were rather large coconut plantations on the island. And from these and many others scattered over the globe came raw materials that were used in making our product. So the, the next time you pour some Lux Flakes into a dishpan, you might remember that a lot of people and places all around the world are helping to wash your dishes. And turning from dishes to drama, we raise the curtain on the first act of Guadalcanal, starring William Bendix as Taxi, Preston Foster as Father Donnelly, and Lloyd Nolan as Hook, with Richard Jekyll as Chicken. They were all in school a dozen or so years ago. They were taught geography from books and maps, and many forgot the lesson. Now they are Marines. Again, they're learning geography, but it is caught with fire and blood and steel. And this time, no one will ever forget. Let's suppose it's February 1942 instead of 44. Only two years ago, and suppose someone asked the question, What is Guadalcanal? Now the answers would run something like this. Huh? Guadalcanal? Huh, never heard of that place. How about you? Oh, sure, Guadalcanal. That's in South America. They sent us bananas. Uh, that man next to you, do you know? Yeah, it's a canal, like in Panama and the Suez Canal. I think it's in Spain. And you, Mr. DeMille, in February 1942, how would you have answered the question? Well, the, the chances are I'd have run blushing to the nearest encyclopedia. Yes, few people knew much about Guadalcanal. Among those few were these officers in the Marines. Guadalcanal, one of the Solomon Islands lying in the South Pacific. About 6,000 miles from the United States, 3,340 miles from Japan, 1,100 miles northeast of Australia. It's adjacent to several other islands, Savo, Bougainville, Kalagi. Guadalcanal itself is 90 miles long, 30 miles wide. Mountainous and heavily forested. On it are a few copra or coconut plantations. Guadalcanal recently has assumed tremendous strategic importance following its occupation by Japanese troops, who are now using it as a base of supplies and the site of an airfield. This island must be taken from the enemy at any cost and at the earliest possible moment. The earliest possible moment 
for six months and coming. Then, in August 1942, three transports loaded with Marines plow through the placid waters of the South Pacific. On one of the ships is a chaplain. His name is... Donnelly. William Donnelly. Yes, I'm a chaplain. I'm not a fighter. I carry no weapons. But there's a place for me in this war. I'll find it sooner or later and then do what I can. They'll need help. No one knows where these ships are going, not even the colonel. But it's very pleasant in the beautiful white sunshine of the signal bridge. We watch the blue sea slip by. Colonel Grayson and the other officers, like Captain Davis and Captain Cross, are relaxing. As contented as if they were on their front porches back home. What a way to travel to war, Colonel. Yeah, just wish we had the funnies. I'd sure like to know if Mammy Yoakum ever got the termites out of the turnip patch. The enlisted men are below, on the port deck. As usual, the favorite occupation is shooting the breeze, exchanging scuttlebutt. Boy, I'd sure like to be back home right now, sailing me a boat on Chesapeake Bay. If I was home, I wouldn't be on no boat. Ebbets Field, that's for me. Watching them beautiful bums. Yeah, bums is right. Just leading the league, Sergeant Malone, just leading the league. Oh, sure, that league. You got any dough that says the Yanks will take the bums in the series? And look, Taxi, the Dodgers ain't even in the World Series yet. And what good is gold gonna do, dough gonna do you where you're going? How do you know where we're going? Ah, uh, pipe down. Besides, I don't care if I never see any more dough again in my life. Of course, you guys know I'm talking about Confederate dough. Hmm? Hey, yeah, chicken. Ain't that guy over there a war correspondent or, or something? Yeah, that's him. Hey, you. Hiya, Leatherneck. How's about putting my name in the paper? The funny paper. Sure, son. What name is it? Johnny Anderson. You can call him Chicken on account of he's just sprouting his pin feathers. Boy, well, a certain party I know get a kick out of that. Oh, you and that certain party no, again. Chicken, you know your mother don't let you go out with James yet. Yeah, well, listen, you guys. Me and this certain party... Are... Look, pipe down, will you? Pipe down! Yes, just like a pleasure cruise. At night, we're out on deck again. The boys singing. It's funny in a way. You never hear them singing war songs or boogie woogie or that fast jitterbug stuff. It's always the old familiar song. Slow and sentimental and corny. And then you remember how young they are. Dear Mom, we are still somewhere on the Pacific Ocean, and I do not know, Mom. Right into that baby yours again, Chicken? Oh, sure, why not? Come down, huh? Yeah, she's a real hunk of woman, and she don't give me no arguments either. She don't, huh? I knew a dame like that once, but so did a lot of other guys. Well, see you later, Chicken. I'm going back on deck. See you, sir. Hey, thank Yeah? Hot, ain't it? Yeah. How would you guys like a nice, tall glass of ice-cold beer? Beer. Strictly a middle-class beverage. The last time I was home in Brooklyn, we was having cocktails. My old lady brought them in. I take one taste, and boy, what a kick. You know what she did, my old lady? No, what? She took them out and put in another slug of gin. Mm. What a sweet old lady. Yeah, well, time to turn in, guys. Yeah. Good night, Hook. Taxi. Okay, boys, come on, come on. Better knock off Skylock and hit the sack. Lights out, ten minutes. See you below, Sarge. Yeah, after I get these kids to bed. Okay, good night, Hook. Say, uh, do you know yet what we're up to? Oh, it's the same old thing, Seuss. Maneuvers. Go on, now turn in. Maneuvers? Ah, I'm getting pretty tired of this whole business. Yeah, well, one of these days you're going to run into the real thing. Well, sooner the better. Good night, Hook. Good night, partner. <laughs> Another lazy day has ended. As uneventful as all our days have been for more than a week now. The only difference is that we're a few hundred miles closer to whatever we're heading for. At dawn the next morning, we learn the answer. Up on the bridge, I see Colonel Grayson, Captain Cross, and Captain Davis. They're looking through binoculars at something big beyond the mist. Their men are on the deck below. And what they see is something they have never seen before. Look at it. Just look at it. What's going on here, boys? Look, Father, look. There's a thousand of them. Transport, cruisers, destroyers. Yeah, and over there, you see? Plane carriers. I knew something was up. I knew it. So we're out of maneuvers, huh? Well, if he only knew where he was going. Wherever it is, chicken. It looks like we mean business. Boy, I never seen so many ships before. That is, outside the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Hey, something's heading this way. You see that launch? Yes. With a civilian. So maybe he wants to enlist. How about me swapping places with him, Hook? Ah, and you wouldn't miss this for a week's pay, and you know it. 
Well, gentlemen, at last I have the news for which we've all been waiting. We're going to attack the Japanese strongholds on Guadalcanal and Tulagi and the Solomon Islands. Yes, that is uh, uh, you have a question already, Captain Cross. <laughs> yes, sir, if I may. Uh, the question is, when? Well, it may be tomorrow or the next day or the day after that. If we choose, we can sight Guadalcanal within 18 hours. But whether we do or not depends upon the strength of the enemy's defenses. Uh, Captain Davis? I was wondering, sir, if this task force is going to remain with us. Uh, I doubt it. The Navy and Coast Guard will lay down the barrage and remain offshore until we've established a beachhead. The carriers will give us what reconnaissance they can. Uh, B Company, that's you, Captain Cross. We'll take the left half of the beachhead. A Company, Captain Davis, the right. Our chief objective is an airfield, which the enemy has almost completed. Now I know you're all wondering about this gentleman here, whom the Navy just brought aboard. He's Mr. Weatherby. He supervised the cochlear plantation on Guadalcanal. And he can give us an idea of what it's like. And Mr. Weatherby, please. Well, gentlemen, after crossing the beach here... You'll have to penetrate a field of grass, as you can see on this map. Oh, grass sounds easier than pillboxes. Yes, but it's four to six feet high. Good oh. stuff for the Japs to hide in. Now, two rivers border the section you're particularly interested in. At the north, of course, is the beach, and at the south, the airfield. Uh, like a square. Exactly, Colonel. Hmm. I'm not a soldier, but my guess is that your toughest problem is crossing the beach and getting your men under the cover of the palm trees as quickly as possible. There's a grove of these trees just beyond the grass. Yes, we're going to lose men... But remember this, don't stop to help the wounded. The corpsman will take care of them. You have to cover the men who will be landing behind you. Is that uh, clear, gentlemen? Uh, while I'm on the subject, Captain Davis. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, post the following order. Aye, sir. An XE to General Order Number 3. Burial. Graves will be suitably marked. All bodies will wear identification tags. And now, Mr. Weatherby, Sergeant Hook Malone Captain has a mimeographed paper in his hand. The ink is still wet. He holds it carefully as he reads it to the men of Company A. Coming action marks the first offensive in the war against the enemy involving ground forces of the United States. The Marines have been selected to initiate this action. Ain't it always the way? Which will prove the forerunner of successive offensive actions that will end in ultimate victory for our cause. Yeah. We are meeting a tough and wily opponent, but he is not sufficiently tough or wily to overcome us because we are Marines. Now you're talking. Each of us has an assigned task. Let each vow to perform it to the utmost of his ability with added effort for good measure. Good luck and God bless you. Walter E. Grayson, Colonel. Very well done, Hook. Very academic. But when do we do it? Okay, boys. Inspection, ten minutes. On the double. Well, Chick, looks like it won't be long now, huh? Looks that way, Captain. Hey, what time is it? Back home, anyway. Let me see, uh, how many hours difference is it? Well, there's 19 between here and San Francisco, and there's three more between there and home. <laughs> but I, I can never tell which way it is. Ah, <laughs> me too. I can never tell whether today is yesterday or tomorrow. Oh, well, take it easy, kid. See you later. Yeah, so long, Taxi. I want a girl. Small talk, scuttlebutt, is not a privilege of enlisted men only. The officers shoot the breeze, too. But Captain Davis and Captain Cross have been doing that for years. Are you looking in the mirror for a while, Getting bald? Oh, it sure looks like it. What do you suppose Davis and the kids are doing right now? Sleeping, I hope. How do you feel? Scared? Sure, but I try to look at it as just another job, like, like selling a big order when there's a lot of sales resistance. Funny that we should end up like this. The first two companies in. Three to one says my outfit lands. I'll take that. One coconut says you don't. All right, now, wait a minute, you guys. Wait a minute. Pipe down, will you? Now, most of you have never had any experience in the jungle before, but the Japs have. Plenty. So let me give you some advice. Keep your mouth shut. Stop yelling your heads off. We can beat them at their own game of silence if we try, but... Well, you know how Marines are. Some dope will yell, Hey, Mac, is that C Company over there? <laughs> yeah, well, it ain't funny. Keep an eye out for snipers all the time. You see a bunch of bananas and a coconut tree, shoot them down. Makes sense, don't it? You're a very profound guy, Hook. Now, look. Hey, wait a minute. What's that you got? A blackjack? That thing ain't no government issue. No, no, no. That, that's Flatbush issue. I, uh, I just made it. 
If it'll make the Japs happy to die for their emperor, I'm going to try to make them happy. Oh, well, you're going to take the island all by yourself, I suppose. Well, that would cause no surprise in certain circles of Brooklyn. <laughs> and one thing more, guys. Don't go around picking up any helmets or anything else that Japs leave laying around. Yeah, but supposing you promised a certain party a souvenir. Just forget it, chicken. Sure, you're liable to find it's been rigged up with wiring and it'll blow right up on your kisser. Oh, oh hiya, Father. Hello, Hello boys. Boy. Say, uh, Padre, is there any natives on that island? Mr. Weatherby said several thousand. Animals? No, I believe they're strict vegetarians, chicken. But then, of course, they have never tasted marine meat. <laughs> oh. Well, don't worry. We may land tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. It is Friday. <laughs> Friday, the 7th of August. It's here. The day of landing. Now on the decks, there is smell of oil and steel. Every weapon has been cleaned and checked a dozen times. Bolo lives and bayonets. So sharp that they sing when your thumb touches the blade. The talk and the laughter are gone now. Hearts are pounding, nerves jumping. Perhaps because what's happening is so unbelievable. Like a dream. Here and there, a man wets his lips. Breathes a little harder, eyes strain waiting for a sight of that high, irregular mass lying beyond the sheen of water. Guadalcanal. Well, there she is. Uh, we, we must have passed the jet batteries by now, Colonel. Either it's a trick or they're awful dumb. Well, anyhow, Colonel, if it works out, it'll make a swell story for me to write about. Let's not think of it any other way. It's got to work out. Looks like this is it, huh? Yeah. You better unbuckle your chin straps and cartridge belts, man. Bring on them Japs, brother. Yeah, this ain't no turkey shoot, Tex. Make them all count. Don't worry, Sarge, I will. Sorry, we're not going in the same boat, Walter. Uh, no, you're just putting all of our eggs in one basket. Funny how we can stand here preparing to force a landing on the Japs and, and act as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Yeah, yeah it is, rather. Hey, look. You see the turrets on that cruiser? Yeah. They're getting ready to lay it down. No, Sarge. Times like these kind of make me wish I was back in Brooklyn driving my cab with the fast meter, keeping an eye on them bums. What are you talking about? When the Yanks get another crack in them, they'll take them apart. Oh, I shouldn't live so long. Hey, what am I saying? All right, here we go. Good luck, men. Same to you. Okay, boys. Over we go. Now, before Mr. DeMille presents Lloyd Nolan, Preston Foster, William Bendix, and Richard Jekyll in Act Two of Guadalcanal Diary, here's our fashion reporter, Libby Collins, to tell us about a style show that has a treasury department agent as its star. She's Linwood Relange Esplair, the maid of cotton for 1944, and she's selling more bonds in over 40 cities, and in her spare time, modeling her all-cotton wardrobe. The clothes are all ones you can make yourself and easy to follow patterns. And all the fabrics are lustable cotton. So you can put what you save on cost and on upkeep into war bonds. An excellent idea, Libby. Won't you tell us more about Miss Gisclair? Well, she's a tall, dark Louisiana co-ed, and she was selected made of cotton from contestants representing all the southern cotton-growing states. She's touring the country, showing women how practical and pretty an all-cotton wardrobe can be. So watch your local newspapers to see when she'll be in your town. Is everything she wears made of cotton? Mm Mm-hmm. Dresses, stockings, undies, even shoes. There are slacks, play clothes, suits, lovely feminine afternoon socks, evening dresses, too. All made of cotton and all lustable. The fabrics were all tested by the Lust Laboratory and will still be bright and new-looking months later if you always wash them with gentle Lust flakes. Yes, Libby, nice cottons are really fine fabrics. They deserve the same gentle Lux care you give rayons to keep them lovely longer. Harsh soaps, too hot water and cake soap rubbing can make them look drab and old before their time. Always use lukewarm water and mild Lux flakes. Then you can be sure your pretty cottons will lead a long, long life. Listen while we sum it up for you in both words and music. Cottons lead a long life when they lead a Lux life. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Guadalcanal Diary. Starring William Bendix as Taxi, Lloyd Nolan as Hook, Preston Foster as Father Donnelly, and Richard Jekyll as Chicken. We know the Japs are full of tricks. 
But we haven't counted on the surprise awaiting us as we land on Guadalcanal. Everything points toward a bloody battle on the beach. But nothing happens. Not a shot, Japanese or American, is fired. The Japs have vanished. Either the Navy and the Coast Guard have blown them all to bits, or... Or what? We don't know. Boy, I gotta sit down. I'm all wore out landing against such stubborn resistance. Hey, don't worry, Taxi. We'll hear from him yet. Yes, me. It's too good to be true. It's a trap. We'll know soon enough. The old man says the Japs are hiding in the hills. We're to stay here and hold this village. Yeah, it's very wasteful. They didn't even stop to mine the runway. I'd say they're very considerate little sons of heaven. Hey, somewhere in there. Where? Look. Look out, guys. I'm going in. Hey, chicken. You cover taxi from here. I'll go around back. Right, sir. Watch out, kid. Here I go. All right, you little yellow. C- <laughs> well, what do you know? Hey, okay, relax. Look at them pigs. Pigs? Hey, they're pigs. Yeah, look at them go. I'm sorry I called you a nasty name, pig. <laughs> Hey, give me a cigarette, will you? Yeah, sure. Since when did you start smoking cigarettes? I'm going to start right now. Look, says they got a warehouse full of Jap beer and caviar. Yeah, fish eggs. I ate some. They taste pretty good. Maybe the Japs poisoned them. If nothing happens to you, Butch, let me know. Gangway, gangway. Oh, hey, Padre, where did you get the bicycle? Now, don't crowd me, boys. There are plenty more where this came from. Boy, that's a honey. There must be a couple of hundred Jap trucks over there. Radios, guns, everything. Well, Padre, I guess we really caught them with their kimonos down, huh? <laughs> Well, if you want to be elegant, Taxi, that's one way of putting it. But from the reports, we're getting too laggy. Things over there aren't going so well. Get behind those trees, guys. On the double. Hey, Taxi. Yeah? This is it, huh? Yeah, maybe. Sergeant, look. Sergeant. All right, sir. What's going on there? Oh, he can't tell, sir. The shots came from the edge of the jungle. Hey, Sarge. There they are. Three monkeys on a rope. Hey, sir. Looks like Private Steinhaus got three prisoners. Bring them in here. Hey, taxi, they're pretty small guys, huh? Yeah, they don't smell so good either. Hey, Snow White, where's the rest of the seven dwarfs? That ain't no use, guys. They don't speak English. That's Hart, that's Schaffner, and Marks. Uh, good work, Steinhaus. Where'd you pick them up? Found them sitting under a bush, sir. Sir, uh, these the monkeys we're fighting? No, no, these are laborers. They keep pointing off toward the hill, sir. I guess that's where the rest of them went to. Hey, what are they doing? Playing? They think we're going to shoot them, Sergeant. Sergeant! All right, sir. Get them something to eat. And then turn them over to the MP. All right, sir. Get moving, Tojo. Come on. No, no, no. Cut now. Yeah. Avocado. Avocado. We ain't got no avocados. You don't have to wait long to learn what tropical weather is like. The sky suddenly blackened. We're drenched in a steaming cloudburst. The rain comes down in torrents. And through it sloughs a steady plop, plop, plop of the sentry's feet. And then it comes. <coughs> A solitary shot. And one of the sentries sighs and crumples silently into the black mud. He is dead. Holman! Holman! Forget it. Too late. Is he, is he dead? Yes, he is. He's dead. May God have mercy on his soul. The next E to General Order Number 3. Burial. Graves will be suitably marked. All bodies will wear identification tags. <laughs> There is little sleep this first night of occupation. We know now that the enemy has not fled. That in the denseness of the jungle, men are lurking. Silent, dangerous, watching us. How many are there? Where are they hiding? How grave is our danger? Not one of us can say. All we can do is wait. Wait and watch in the rain. In the distance, we hear the dull rumble of naval guns. Our ships have met the Jap Navy. And we realize that if our people out there lose the battle, we'll be fighting for our lives before morning. Suddenly, most of us know the awful feeling of being pitifully small. Tiny particles of humanity caught up in the gigantic whirlpool of war. At such a moment, without knowing it, we thank God for men like Taxi. Yes, leave it to Taxi to break the tension one way or another. Help! Help! Help with the Jap! Taxi, hang on to him. Hey, what? Oh, for the love of Oh, yeah. Hang uh, on to him, Taxi. Tojo himself. That's the best looking Jap I ever oh, seen. I'm sorry, Sarge. I, I could have sworn I felt his buck teeth. All right, Corporal, here. Here's your first Jap prisoner. Uh, well, it ain't nothing nothing but a hunk of palm tree. That's right. Uh, I guess the rain must have knocked it off the tree and 
Dumped it in my arm. Yeah, you captured it fair-handed. The Flatbush Sergeant yours. <laughs> All right, you guys. Pipe down. Shove off. Go on. All right, shove off. We feel better in the morning. The rain is over. We dig foxholes, and on the airfield, steam rollers and tractors roar out, taking up where the Japs had left off, finishing runways, setting up defense against the day when we'd have our own air support, and knowing that until that day arrives, we have but one course to follow on Guadalcanal. Dig in. Dig in and wait. Well, Colonel, anything I can write about for the folks back home? Well, you can tell them that our task force beat off the Japs last night. It cost us three of our cruisers to do it, though, and one Australian. Uh, the fight was just off Savile. What about our casualties on Tulagi? Uh, pretty heavy. The Japs are holding up in caves, fighting to the last man. Any idea how many we got? About 400 on Tulagi, 800 on Gavutu. Well, that's good news, sir. Uh, now that I've got it, how am I going to get it to the state? Well, there's a Navy plane scheduled in here today or tomorrow. I'll write it up, and I'll see if I can get it aboard for you. I think they'd like to know it back home. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hey, how's about letting me that razor when we get through? What do you want a razor for? Oh, I must have lost mine coming ashore. But you ain't got no use for a razor chicken. Oh, I don't know about that. Here, look. Huh? No, Where? Not, not there. Down here. You see? Under the chin. Under the chin? Yeah. Kind of, kind of run your finger there. Hmm. Uh, hard to say, though. Sure it ain't sand? No, I just washed my face, Jackie. You did, huh? Yeah, I, I guess maybe you've got a whisker there. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it now with the naked eye. Yeah, that's what I said. You want I should lather you up and take her off? No, I just assume you loan me the razor. <laughs> the chicken's got feathers. What do you know? Hey, it's kind of cute, ain't it? Oh, there's the padre. I got to tell him. Hey, father. Yes, Haxi? Chicken's turning his whiskers loose. Look. Hey, that's right. Congratulations, chicken. <laughs> Boy, there's a certain party you like, you know. Uh, no, I guess it'd be kind of silly to tell her. I imagine she's assumed as much all along, chicken. Look, I just found something, too. Limes. They're limes, huh? Yes. Hey, Hook, come on over here. Chicken's got whiskers and the Padre's got lines. Oh, yeah? <laughs> now, if we only had some gin and ice, fizz water, a couple of maraschino cherries, a picture of Tom Collins. We could drink the chicken spit. Excuse me, partner. I'm just thinking out loud, you know. Well, that's all right, Sergeant. You furnish the other ingredients, and I'll supply the lines. Here we go again. Get the dirt, you guys. Condition red. Condition red. Get into the box hole, Ben. Get into the box hole. Somehow I can't get over how enemy planes with the obvious intention of dropping a bomb on my head. It looks so beautiful. Get down, Padre. You ain't kidding about those bombs. Hey, chicken. He's hit. Me? Hey, chicken. Look at the blood. These guys, I wonder. Let me see. You won't, Nature. It's just a concussion. You're in the burrow so deep, you're pushing yourself on your elbows. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, they're dropping something out of the plane. Parachutes, they're bailing out troops. Those eight men, Sarge. They're baskets. Yeah, baskets. Supplies, probably for the men in the jungle. Yeah, most of them are going to land right here, though. Come on, guys, let's take a look. Oh, the ammunition. Hey, look, a box of candy. <laughs> they need candy like the Dodgers need a fourth umpire. Now, wait a minute. Look, papers. They look like messages. Yeah, they're full of good writing. I wonder what it says. We'll soon find out. Hey, Manuel. Yes, buddy. Yes, buddy. We have a Jap letter for you. Oh, that's me, all right. Me speak Japanese almost good as speak English. That's what I'm afraid of. Here, it was in this basket, Manuel. Let me see this. Oh, if they hear the enemy before your eyes is collapsing, they mean us. <laughs> hey, Sarge. No. Look, I'm collapsing. <laughs> Shut up. Go on, go on, Manuel. Be assured of help from Imperial Heaven. By no means run away from your position. The enemy has suffered enormous losses. All transports have been sunk and their choices troops annihilated. It's funny, I never thought of it. Maybe we're dead and we don't know it. How about that, Padre? Well, if we are, at least it's not Imperial Heaven. Sergeant Malone. Hi, sir. Find Captain Davis. Ask him to come here. Well, he's got a touch of cat fever, Colonel. They just took him to the sick bay. Captain Crawford, right away. Hi, sir. Come in, Walter. Colonel. I've just had a report. 
The natives say there's quite a large bunch of Japs at Matanikau Village. Aye, sir. Now, that's about five miles from here. And maybe you'd better take a patrol down there and see what it's all about. It'll be a pleasure. You'd better go by boat. Take a Higgin. You keep offshore far enough so they can't snipe you. And then come in where and when you can. Oh, well, you might take uh, Sergeant Malone with you. Aye, sir. And maybe the report is true. Maybe it isn't. Be careful, Walter. Don't take any unnecessary chances. They leave at noon. Captain Cross, Hook, and 24 men. Six hours later, about dusk, Taxi and the boys return to the beach to watch for them. It is almost dark when they see something offshore. Tell you it ain't a log. It's moving. See? Step aside, Chest. I'll show you how I used to win them Cupid dogs at the Coney Island shooting gallery. A buck you miss. Hey, wait a minute, Taxi. It's a guy. Look, he's swimming. Yeah, that's right. A Jap. Coming this way, too. Probably a one-man suicide squadron with a load of dynamite. Gonna sneak in as soon as it's dark. If it's a Jap, where'd he come from? Uh, some of these gooks is pretty good swimmers, kid. Maybe he come down the coast where Hook and them went. Taxi, it is Hook. Put down that gun. Uh, trying to run out on that bet, huh? You're nuts. Look, Taxi, it's Hook. Hook, Hook! Sarge! Sarge! I might have shot him. Gangway, guys. I'm going in after him. You all right, Hook? <coughs> you all right, kid? Yeah. Yeah, give me the... Give me the colonel. I got to see the colonel. Sure, Sarge, sure. Come on, guys. Pick him up. Go on, Sergeant. After you dug in on the beach, then what? Well, they started. They started closing in, sir, one by one. We got him. Captain Cross asked the volunteers to bring back word to you. So McDonald went. He got about 50 yards. And then Alberti, Blandick, Zemanski, all killed. They kept coming closer and closer. Grenades, machine guns. We got lots of them, sir, but after a while, when I looked around, I, I find out I was the only one left. They were all dead. Captain Cross, 24 men, dead. I, I figured it was no use, so I made a run for the ocean. Uh, that, that ain't quite true, sir. The ocean was right there. The tide had come in. And some of the, the bodies that... Keep talking, Sergeant. Hey, I said. Anyway, I started swimming. I, I kept underwater as much as I could, and I managed to get back here. But I ain't staying here, sir. I'm going back. I'm, I'm going to go back there. Easy, Hook. Take it sir. easy. Take see? it easy. I, I could see him. They come out of the jungle and ran their bayonets into him. They were dead, and they ran their bayonets into him. Yeah. We got to go back there, sir. We got to go back. Yes. We're going back to Matanikau. This time we'll go in force. And not just to take a look around, Malone. Yeah. This time we go for blood. Thank you, sir. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Preston Foster, William Bendix, Lloyd Nolan, and Richard Jekyll for Act Three of Guadalcanal Diary. Mr. Kennedy, I have a wonderful new way to shop that saves time and energy. Every time I want to buy something, I buy a war bond instead. And then just imagine how I'll spend it after the war. Let's ask a couple of people from the audience what they'd do with it. I'd like to buy something for the house, like new curtains or an electric mixer. I'm going to buy something pretty for myself. Well... I'm going to buy nylon stockings, half a dozen pairs, right at one clip. Yes, that's what many women say. But so far, those post-war nylons are only a dream. So why not let's face the fact? Lots of women didn't like nylon at first, remember? Then after they'd worn them for a while, they raved about them. Probably you didn't like the new rayons much at first. Neither did their makers. But they needed time to work out improvements. Now there really are some lovely ones. And if they're given the right care, they wear as well as silk. Every time you put a pair of those pretty rayon stockings in the wash bowl, remember... That's practically a dollar bill in that wash bowl, so I hope you're using luck, suds, because dollar bills don't grow on trees. If you're tempted to be careless and use strong soaps for stockings or rub with cake soap, 
Remember, those stockings cost money. Give them the Lux care they deserve, and they'll repay you in extra wear. Yes, strain tests prove stockings washed with Lux flakes last twice as long as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Nightly Lux care cuts way down on run. Helps you to get two pair wear from every pair. If your dealer is out of Lux flakes, try again soon. More is on the way. Remember, Lux is worth waiting for. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll investigate the private lives of our stars after the play. But now here's the curtain for the third act of Guadalcanal Diary. Starring Preston Foster, Lloyd Nolan, William Bendix, and Richard Jacob. We're going back to Matanacow. And this time, for blood. Men are going, and boys. Going into battle for the first time in their lives. Boys just out of high school. Grocery clerks, truck drivers, insurance salesmen. Filled with the memories of tricks and ambush and slaughter. The memories of dead friends. It will be another hour before we reach Matanikau. We slip through the jungle. A few at a time. Yeah. This is it, huh? Yeah, we're getting closer, chicken. How do you feel about killing the people? Kill or be killed, Danny. Besides those Japs ain't people. Yeah, but I mean the first time you got one of them. Yeah, it was kind of rugged, I guess. It was just a matter of repetition. Quit thinking about it, you go crazy. Yeah, but I wonder what it's going to be like. Hey, chicken. Yeah? You've got plenty of cover here behind these trees. I got an idea those monkeys will be coming this way. You can pick them off from here like fish in a barrel. Look, where, where are you going? I'm going to see how taxi's making out with the mortar. I'll be back. Just keep your head down, kid. Look, there's one over there in the huh? clearing. He's dead. Oh, yeah, he's an officer, too. See a sword? That's for me, Hook, that sword. Oh, you nuts, get down. Oh, he's dead, ain't he? And I promised a certain party of souvenirs. You've got enough to think about without going after souvenirs. You just stay put. Yeah, nice work, guys. Keep laying it down in taxi. I'll be running for the woods any minute, Dodge. Is any of them left to run? Any sign of snipers? Not yet. There ain't. Texas watching for them over there. Hey. You better watch closer than that. You heard, oh, taxi? Would you look at that? Right through my helmet. Look, hook, it ain't possible. Put it back on you. We'll get back to the mortar. Big enough to drive me kids. Hey, Texas. See what I see? Yeah. Up on the coconut tree. Watch. What do you think you are, Gary Cooper or Roy Rogers? Well, they're pretty good, too. This will put him out. This will put him out. Go, 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 Look, you see? He's sticking out his greasy kisser. Watch. Scratch one squint-eyed jack. Hey, it's okay, Tex. That was for Captain Cross. I got 24 to go. Hey, taxi. Yeah. I'm going back over the ridge. Join us up there when you're through. What's the... Hey, chicken, where are you? All right, all right. Chicken, you crazy kid. I tried to get the sword. I thought he was dead. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, take it easy. I, I killed him, but he shot me first. Look, oh, am I going to die? No, no, you'll be all right. I, I promised a certain party. That... I got to get you out of here. Hey, you think you can walk? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Come on now. Up, up. That's it. Put your weight on me. Get the sword. I'll come back later and get it for you. I'll get you a couple of chaps to put on it, too. What What time is it? Will you say your breath? I mean, back home. I, I never figured this was going to happen to me. What time is it, Hook? What? Chicken. <laughs> Better get him to an ambulance, Doctor. You'll never make it, Father. Is it that bad, Doc? He lost too much blood, needs plasma, needs it fast. Can't we give it to him here? With all these other men waiting? Well, he's just a kid. They're all just kids. I've watched you often enough. Perhaps I can do it myself. You? Well, why not? You die if you don't. Nothing to lose. Coleman! Plasma! Over here, quick! Hook. Yeah, Father. I think you'll be all right. You'd better get back. I'll watch out for him. All right. Thanks, bud. It was over by nightfall. The Battle of Matanikau. In this war of mighty armies, of masses of men, 
of tanks and planes, it has been nothing more than an episode, an incidental skirmish. Only a few hundred will ever remember it. The boys who fought there and the families of those we buried. But the enemy has at last been met and we have wiped them out. Those who can walk, trudge back to our village in silence. They're weary and stunned, moving like drunken men or men in a nightmare. Heads and legs bandaged, clothes torn, unlit cigarettes dangling from their lips. Old before their time, veterans. We rest at the village. We sleep. And then in the morning, as if from heaven itself, comes the one thing that can best snap us out of it. Mail. Mail from that distant, hazy spot, filled of hopes and dreams. Home. Delicious. Come here, give me that. That's <laughs> mine. Here, Captain Cross. Captain. Oh, I'll take it, Corporal. Yes, sir. There's two more forms, Captain David. Yeah. Come on, take what about me? I'll wish you stay pot. Take it easy, Flatbush. We'll get around to you. McElboy. McElboy. Hey, where's McElboy? That's you. Huh? Oh, yeah, me. Uh, Bassett. Kalinsky. Faber. I'm a mother. I'm a mother. Look, her name's Geraldine. She's three months old. Hey, did you hear that? I'm a mother, fella. Three months old. He got up a little soon, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Who'd you hear from, Taxi? Me? Oh, from the Flatbush Athletic Club. It says, are you keeping fit these difficult days? You owe it to yourself to exercise regularly so that you will keep your body in the pinker condition. You think we've been neglecting our health out here? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll join up. Come on, Hook, let's go over and see the chicken. I don't mm. take that deal with me. It was weeks before we had reason again to celebrate. Weeks of rain and disease and malnutrition. Weeks of digging graves. Of watching the enemy slip more and more men ashore from Bougainville and Rafal. Weeks of being a target, day and night, of their bombers and zeros, against whom we're lucky to put up six or seven Grumman fighters. We wonder if this will be another baton, another corregidor. And then they come. Reinforcements. They're finally here. Immediately, we start to push inland. And the Jap runs to his hills and his caves, sweeping us down with machine guns, chained to them sometimes, rather than surrender. One by one, these fanatics must be blasted out, and the job goes to men like Taxi and Hook. They do it with dynamite and grenades, with gasoline and sheer guts. To them, it's all in a day's work now. And when the job is done, back to camp they come and rush for the portable radio. Ah, uh, pipe down, you guys. I got it. Listen. And now for the world of sports. All right, shut up, shut up. Sportsman's Park, St. Louis, was packed with 34,000 wild-eyed fans as the Cards and the Yanks tangled in the second game of the current World Series. Come on, you Redbirds. Come on, give us a score. Give us a score. In will the you... eighth inning, with the score tied one to one, the fans got the thrill that they've been waiting for. Yeah, but will you give us the score? The Cards had two men out with when Enos Slaughter caught a pass one and slid into second base for a double. That's it, Enos. I knew you could do it. It's all right, Tommy. It's all right. Think nothing of it. Then Phil Rizzuto at second let the ball slip away and Slaughter dashed safely to third. Oh, oh I was expecting that. And that brought Sam Musial to bat. He worked on him for a 3-2 pitch. And then with the home crowd screaming for a hit, he crouched over the plate. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's coming in again. Listen. And so, baseball fans, today's game ended with a final score. And that's the way today's game ended. Thanks for listening, folks. See you tomorrow. Condition red! Condition red! Condition red! Worst one yet. They're throwing everything at us with the kitchen stove. There's a stove now. Here, chicken. Take a drag on that cigarette. Oh, I don't mind the one with my name on it. The one addressed to whom it may concern that I don't like. Anybody who says he ain't scared is a fool or a liar. Do you hear what I hear? What do you mean, Padre? Those are not all bombs. They're eight inch shells. But they got nothing anywhere near that big unless. Yeah. Unless we got visitors. The Jap Navy. 
There's a report that a couple of battleships and eight cruisers are off Cabo. They really faced them. I don't mind saying I don't like it. Yeah. I got things on my mind, too, but I don't know how the Padre will like it. Go right ahead, Jackson. Well, I don't know about you guys, but me, well... Well, I'm telling you, this thing's a way over my head. It's going to take somebody bigger than me to handle it. I ain't much at this praying business. My old lady always took care of that. Yeah, my old lady was like that, too. Well, I don't know as I mean that kind of praying. You know, the Lord's Prayer and things like that. I know. I, I used to pray like that back when I was a kid. You know, Lord, give me this, give me that. Please let the Yanks win. But I've never been in a spot like this before. I don't like to hear you guys talk that way. Me either. You guys are different. I don't believe you're scared. If you were, you wouldn't have gone up under those cliffs. Right under their noses, dropping gasolines and grenades in their kids. Stop it, chicken. I'm just a guy. I come out here because somebody had to come. I don't want no medals. I just want to get this thing over with and go back home. I'm just like everybody else, and I'm telling you I don't like it. Except maybe I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I guess it's up to... up to God. And I'm not kidding when I say I hope he knows just how I feel. I'm not going to say I'm sorry for everything I've done in my life. Maybe I am, and maybe I'm not. The only thing I know is I didn't ask to get in this spot. If we get it, it sure looks that way now. Well, then I I only hope he figures we've done the best we could and lets it go at that. Maybe this is a funny kind of praying to you guys, but it's what I'm thinking and praying. Amen. You're sick at your stomach. Your head rings like a giant bell pounded with a giant sledge. It's as if God grabbed the world by the shoulders and shook it and shook it, trying maybe to bring it to its senses. And then, it's over. You're not certain, but you still hear it on your head. The earth doesn't leap up at you anymore, and the shells have stopped screaming, but the planes are still there. Dozens and dozens of planes. Hook stands up funny look in his face. He starts to leave and you grab at him. But he shakes you off and runs outside. Hey, look. look, those are jam steroids. Those are our planes, our planes. Thank God. At last. Morning, Captain Davis. Hello, taxi. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yes, sir. Men, planes, food, hot food. I almost feel good. Uh, uh, Captain. Yeah? What's up, sir? I, uh, we ain't getting all this for nothing. I figure when we get hot chow, it means it's time for us Marines to push on somewhere else. Your guess is as good as mine, Taxi. I'll know later today. Come break the call with that. There are 10,000 Japs on Guadalcanal. They have good equipment. The jungles and rivers are all in their favor. We've done very well at Matanikau, Sonaro, and Bloody Ridge. But we've got to take over this entire island. It means an all-out effort, and I can think of no better date to begin it than tomorrow, November the 10th, the 167th anniversary of the Marine Corps. Dear Mom, I'm fine, and I hope you and Dad are not worrying. It's funny you writing to me how you went to the blood bank, because a few weeks ago... They gave me some of that plasma when I got hit a little. Maybe it was your blood. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Everything here is okay. Okay. Maybe I'll get home soon. I bet you never expected to hear from me again. But ha ha, I fooled you. Because when a gentleman like I tells a lady like you something, that's something. <laughs> Here at last, the great offensive. The men have written their letters home. For many, their last letters. We start at dawn. Along the shore and through the jungle, there was but one command. Attack, attack, attack. They pour it on with tank and plane, grenade and machine gun, pistol and bayonet. It's forward, ever forward. In one gigantic charge across the width and breadth of Guadalcanal. Hook and taxi are loaded down with grenades. 
They carry them in slings. And you can't help but think of those pictures of old-time farmers sowing grain. They, too, are sowing grain. The lethal grain of sudden death. Hey. Hey, hey, hey ain't that General Vandegrift over there with the Colonel? Yeah. Don't he know it's dangerous here? Well, why don't you go tell him? Come on, Frank. Yeah. There is Seuss, born in some tiny Mexican village. He came to the United States and he liked us, and we liked him. Now he is behind five feet of bayonet and rifle, fighting for us, like some dark-skinned demon. Ahead of him, a Jap is fleeing for cover. He has dropped a knife. Hey, Jap, you forgot something. Seuss picks it up, aims and flings the knife with the speed and accuracy of a striking rattlesnake. He forgot something. <laughs> Funny, yeah. And so he dies. Dies in blood and laughter. In the green jungle of Guadalcanal. Seuss never knew what hit him. Chicken hears the shot. He comes running up. There's another shot. And Chicken sprawls grotesquely beside the body of his comrade. And then, out of nowhere, appear two Japanese. With their rifled butts, they prod the motionless bodies. Banzai, honor to Emperor. And back to nowhere, they disappear again. But not quickly enough. Chicken is on his feet and his rifle at his shoulder. And two quick shots make two dead Japs. That's one you taught me for, Joe. Chicken has remembered a Jap officer in a shining sword for a certain party. And on it goes, an avenging army, yard by yard, mile by mile, drunk with righteous hate and fury, until at length this island is cleansed of its plague. Those few Japs who are still alive dash headlong to the sea, and the waters of the Pacific rise and ring down on infamy a green and foamy curtain. December the 10th, 1942. We are leaving Guadalcanal today. They have told us our job is done. More soldiers are landing now. And from this tiny foothold in the Pacific, in good time, we'll go forward. We are all at the beach. Offshore, we see the ships that brought them here and will carry us away. Okay, okay, you guys, stay put. We'll be going aboard in a few minutes. Hey, taxi, look at them. Whiskers all over. Look at them. Hey, I thought you guys here'd be fighting in foxholes. This joint looks great. Give it time, bud. The beauty will wear off. Hey, Sarge, what's it like out here? Oh, it's not too bad, soldiers. Pretty rugged. Come on, guys. See you in Tokyo. Okay, we'll be there waiting for you. And then Colonel Grayson says he has something to read to us. From Admiral W.F. Halsey, commander of the South Pacific Force of the United States Pacific Fleet. Never throughout the long and brilliant history of the Marine Corps have your deeds and sacrifices been surpassed. Your shining courage has surmounted every hardship and conquered a vile and treacherous enemy. By your zeal and accomplishments, you have added a new verse to the Marine hymn, set the pattern for our inevitable victory and tower as an inspiration for every American on every front. Today, as never before, we, the Navy, are justly proud of you. In deep appreciation for a job superbly done, and knowing that you will win again and again unto victory, we say, God bless you all. Yes, God bless you all. Stand there looking out to sea. The waters seem misty. We wonder why we're the ones who are leaving and why so many of us, a mile or so back in the little clearing, are the ones who shall stay on Guadalcanal forever. We know we shall never forget them. We pray that you at home will never forget them, too. So the curtain falls on one of the most stirring real-life dramas of our time. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille will return with our stars for a curtain call. Have you ever noticed how music can be used to express a mood, to picture a situation? Take two women, both doing the daily job of washing dishes. Here's how Mrs. Jones feels about it. Oh, dear, I wish I were through. 
And just look at my red dishpan hands. But, Mrs. Smith... Oh, they're all done. In plenty of time for our first ink class. Mm, and my hands look soft and smooth as ever. That doesn't sound like the same job at all. Tell us, Mrs. Smith, how come you're so cheerful? Oh, dishwashing's no chore, not with luck. But suds, so rich and so kind to my hands. Guess that's why more and more women are changing to Lux Flakes for dishes. Richer suds that wash the dishes fast. Gentler suds that leave hands soft and smooth. A good combination, isn't it? Yes, and it's surprising how thrifty Lux is, too. Goes further and does more dishes. Actually, up to twice as many dishes, Mrs. Smith, as the same weight of other well-known dishwashing soap. A little goes a long way. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our star. In the diary of the Lux Radio Theater, Guadalcanal Diary will occupy an honored page. And here are three of the artists responsible. William Bendix, Preston Foster, and Lloyd Nolan. Thank you, C.B. Glad to be back with you. Yeah, me too. Hey, how are things in Brooklyn, Tim? Brooklyn? Oh, <laughs> I was only acting. I'm, I'm really from New York. Huh? You're not really a Dodger fan? Please, I used to be a bat boy for the New York Giants. Hey, by the way, uh, are they still in the league? Don't kid about that. We are very sensitive. Besides, it makes me remember the great tragedy of my life. The time I had the chance to go south of the Giants for spring training and couldn't make it. Accident, Bill? No, my my mother wouldn't let me. <laughs> well, a bat boy, that, that's very interesting work. Another man that's always amazed me on jobs is Preston Foster. He's done everything from setting up pins in a bowling alley to singing an opera. How many jobs did you have before you got into pictures, Preston? Fifty-six. That's pretty hard to beat in Hollywood. Well, I've just made it, C.B. Guadalcanal Diary is my 57th picture. I don't think he'll last, you. <laughs> What's your play next week, C.B.? Lloyd, well, the author, is one of the foremost no novelists and playwrights of the 20th century. And next week's play is one of his triumphs. The Letter by Somerset Maugham. And our stars will be Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, and Vincent Price. Betty Davis' fine performance in the Warner Brothers picture will be long remembered by all who saw it. And next Monday night, she brings us this drama of a, a few dangerous weeks in the life of a beautiful woman. A performance by Betty, Betty Davis is something you just can't miss, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. And remember, the Marines are still attacking Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, and Vincent Price in The Letter. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. William Bendix will soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Greenwich Village and is currently making a Jules Levy production, The Harry Eight. Preston Foster appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in that studio's production, The Bermuda Mystery. Lloyd Nolan was heard through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of The Sullivans. And Richard Jekyll is currently making Wing and the Prayer, also at 20th Century Fox. Heard in tonight's play were Ed Emerson as Davis, John McIntyre as correspondent, Paul Zaremba as Sooth, and Tom Holland... Eddie Marr, Howard McNear, Herbert Rollinson, Ken Hodge, Bob Young, Charles Steele, Charlie Lung, Norman Field, Gary Breckner. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Betty Davis, Herbert Marshall, in The Letters.